Hello. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the development of the Bowsfield range of mouthpieces. I worked on these with Kristen over the last few years, and it was really important to us that we didn't just copy everything that had gone before. We wanted to look at it from a new perspective, because we have technology now that hasn't been available or wasn't available a hundred years ago when all of the historically great mouthpieces were made. So basically it's like this. If you look at this outside shape of the mouthpiece, that is what's called a blank. So historically people would order, companies would order 10,000 of those. They'd be solid in the middle, but the outside was the same. So they'd make a really good, perfectly good mouthpiece, really lovely air streaming on it, lovely shape to the cup, beautiful, sounds good. And then someone would come in and say, hey, yeah, uh, but I'm on second trombone. Could I have a bigger one, please? And then someone would come in and say, hey, yo, now, bass trombone, got to play, you know, whatever. Miraculous Mandarin, need more sound. Can you make it bigger? And the only thing available, the only option available to the historic mouthpiece makers was to go further down and to go further out this way within the mouthpiece, within the shape of this blank. And we can see that in um, for yourself. You can see this if you look at like a size six and a half mouthpiece and then put a size one mouthpiece next to it, you'll see that on the outside they look exactly the same. And the rim on the side, on the one, is, it's like a little stiletto, it's tiny. So you've got bass drum one place playing on like French horn rims, these tiny little things. And then on a six and a half, the rim's really quite big. Or quite fat, should I say. Now we have the technology to be able to make, okay, this is one size of mouthpiece. You want to make it bigger? We'll make everything bigger. The whole thing goes like this. And so that was the first sort of piece of technology that we wanted to use. So we designed, we came up with... Um, the cup shape that we thought was the most beautiful form that was creating the most beautiful sound. And then I spent literally hours standing next to someone on a lathe, changing the shape of the rim to get what I wanted. Now, the shape of my, this rim on this mouthpiece here, I'll be very honest with you, I got the idea from some very old Austrian mouthpieces. If you look carefully, you'll see that the high point is right in the middle. Now, it's my belief that we judge the size of the rim by the distance between these two high points. And you can see on mine, they're right in the middle. So that means that we can effectively have a wider rim without, without the embouchure registering that it's really a big rim. This is quite a large rim. This is the V3. This was the initial mouthpiece that we developed. So this is, this is my... This is my mouthpiece. And so if you, on, if you have a high point in the middle here, it's going to feel bigger. And if you have a high point out here, it's going to feel much, much bigger. So this enabled us, first of all, that high point in the middle really helps with flexibility. Um, it helps you move around the registers much more easily. And it allows you to play on a larger rim without having the... Um, sort of the tiring aspects of that. Um, I can play two-hour recitals without getting tired. And that didn't used to always be the case. Let me tell you, I've got a couple of hundred mouthpieces at home where that would not be the case. And the other thing is, that perfectly shaped cup, it's shallower than you're used to. I'm not going to show you this one because it's a bit dirty. But it's shallower than you'd be used to. But because the, whim the rim is wider... The volume of air inside the cup is about the same. And these are the technologies that we can use now. And so that's basically the philosophy. We didn't want to copy anything. We wanted to kind of redesign. We look at the mouthpiece. We didn't do it to please people. We did it to make a product that we thought was really good. So that's the basic philosophy behind all of the V and the O series of mouthpieces. The high point on the rim is towards the middle, which allows you to play on a slightly wider rim, which gives you more flexibility. 
and that allows you to have a slightly shallower cup to make the high register easier. We've got the weight of sound because of the volume of air inside of the cup and we've got the ease of the high register and ease of articulation because the cup is not so deep. So that's the basic philosophy of the mouthpieces that we've done. That's as far as I know. If you want to know the technical details, ask Kristen. He loves the nerdy questions, and he knows things about this that I don't know because he hasn't told me about it, but the actual streamlining and all that kind of thing, how the air moves through the, through the mouthpiece, that's his skill.